I am Rick and this is your seat at the table and I think you already know that. We are looking at the Battle for Tycross. Battletech 3050. Let's see. From the unknown states come the clan, blah blah, most successful, blah blah blah, you know how this is. Most successful J Falcon forces were the Falcon Guards, led by Star Crawler, Adler, Adler Mathis. The guards amassed incredible string of victories. Fate was to uh, end up being buried under tons of rock and tombed forever by Lieutenant Kai Allard, given giving uh, and the Federated Commonwealth it's giving the Federated Commonwealth's first victory over the past. I just noticed that's a a nice typo. Giving the should not giving and the should the and should not be in there. Hey, what do you know? Every now and then, and I purchased this for eight eight bucks. Eight bucks, man, in 1990. All right, so we're looking at introduction, how to use scenarios, what are game effects. Uh, basically, we have uh, for use with Battletech and Battle Force in here. So there's a campaign, the Battle of Tycron. We get the reports to the premise coming into the plans, invasion, Jade Falcons, the tie cross uh, campaign, uh, characters, Falcon Guard unit roster, scenarios. So, for each scenario in the book, recreates a battle or encounter involving the Falcon Guard. Several scenarios are interrelated, representing various phases of a single continuous battle or campaign. Players may keep track of the results on one engagement and determine the forces of another later battle. The scenario rules include the, all the information necessary to understand and play the game situation. Each scenario begins with a personal account of the engagement and ends with a brief historical framework of the battle. So, Optional rules including weather, weather game effects, determining forces. Scenarios of this books are historical and thus reflect the actual battles fought between the Falcon Guards and their Federated Common opponents. That is why they, they are often weighted to favor the clan forces, providing a stiffer challenge for the Federated Commonwealth player. If a player wishes to adjust the clan forces or experiment with other combination of mechs and elementals, they use the following optional rules. Bidding, variant Omnimex, clan tactics, coming of the clans, the invasion, Jade Falcons, the Falcon Guards, the Tycross campaign, June 2nd, 3050, dawn hot and dusty in Tycross with the Diab Diab Diabolus howling, uh, howling with unholy fury. Planted a vital crossroads in the Frederick Commonwealth's Tamer March lay directly in the path of the invaders. Garrison, however, by only a single inexperienced unit, the Tycross TMM, in the command of the Tamar March militia, in command of the single in the air, the militia was Lieutenant General John Cicero, a career military man who had taken the posting as a quiet assignment to occupy his few remaining years before retirement, etc. Advance on the Camorra, the last stand, aftermath, counter strike, showdown, victory, and we got our nice little bio pictures and uh, Alder Mathis, Star Colonel. Jade Falcon Clan, Falcon Guards Cluster, and various assorted uh, officers within his command. You ever notice how they all have a sourpuss look to them? Just my opinion. And we have the actual breakdown of the Falcon Guards Cluster, the equipment, how many mechs, or what mechs types and what loadouts they had, and uh, their elementals. Then we have the Beast is Loose, the first contact scenario. After, after the battle trail, one reaches final stages. The remainder of the blackjack operations are embraced from the next assault by the clans. All intelligence indicate the next world uh, blow would come at Tycross, and it did. A massive convoy of clan starships appeared at the system jump point, and then came the astonishing communication asking a, deep for a detailed account of the planet's defenses. Shortly thereafter, a blanket of clan dropships descended on the plane of curtains. Chaotic weather and Tychrus precluded any major air defense operations, so the clan landings were unopposed. Lieutenant General Cicero rushed his FC troops out of the planes in hopes of attacking the Falcons before they had time to organize and set up a proper defense uh, per perimeters. Fortunately for Cicero, the Falcons were all too ready. Militia attack was easily repulsed and resulted in a chaotic defeat for the Federated Commonwealth forces. The Tycross militia had no choice but to retreat, finally regrouping days later in rugged country beyond the Plain of Curtains. The evasion of Tycross was underway. It's a relay station. The king is dead. 
Tiny, uh, by early June, all communications from the world of Trail One had been lost, and its gallant defenders, the 12th Dagonegal Guards, were presumed dead. Among the bits of information, information gathered from the battles of Trail were frightening stories that clans infantry with their special armor. The strength and effectiveness of this armor was not fully known until the early stages of the Tycross invasion, when Jane Falcon elementals overwhelmed elements of the Tycross militia. This was the first time Federated Commonwealth forces witnessed the results of the Klan's bizarre bidding tradition. Observers were at a loss explaining why nearby Falcon mech forces were not brought in to smash the light mechs that crawled away in retreat. It's not until later that the reason was discovered. Alder Mathis, commander of the Falcon Guards, had sent in his elementals, hoping to gain status by using minimal force to defeat his enemy. In this, he was successful. Members of the inexperienced militia were terrified and demoralized by, from their recent defeat. One look at the oncoming elementals and they fled. Unknown number of Federated Commonwealth mechs and mech warriors were captured. Meeting the Falcons. Fleeing the Falcons. On the run. Small unit specially equipped Fencom recon mechs slipped past the Falcon Guards' lead force as Colonel Mathis dashed two chase stars to intercept them. Federated Commonwealth mechs had already spent hours monitoring activities, recording can clan communications by the time the chase stars finally caught up with them. Suddenly, the FC mechs found themselves pinned down in a rugged terrain. The situation looked hopeless until Kimball's heavy lance arrived. With Kimball's lance laying down a, he a heavy cover fire, most of the recon mechs were able to slip away. This seemingly minor engagement actually a major victory for the inner sphere. The data gathered by the recon force proved to be invaluable in planning the counterattack on Tychrus. Tycross. The faithful world would play an important role in the downfall of the Wolf Falcon's guards. Then we got ambush. Then we have a campaign, the defense of Kimura. Washing the spears to the bitter end. Falcons descending. Flight from Kimura. Kick the can. The battle troop scenario. Soul survivors. Payback time. Jung Bung's last stand. And then a little bit more of that fantastic art from the from the 90s. So here we have it. The battle for Tycrus. Uh, I've always I like these 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 type of, of supplements. They narrow a specific battle or, or a portion of a campaign, and they give us some in-depth details both on on a, the units defending or attacking, and uh, also uh, some insight into how the game mechanics should should operate in my mind. And as from a lore builder, they're great fill-in pieces. We knew that we knew the battle takes place. We read the we read the the over uh, the minor effects in the novels themselves. Uh, at the time, this was our our in juice lore for the for fattening up or flushing out the scenario or the battle that takes place. Anyway, that's my opinion on that. Until next time, this is Rick, and I hope you guys have a great weekend.